Recently, Queen Rania of Jordan had an interview on CNN where she talked about the Israel-Palestine conflict. Queen Rania, welcome to our program. Thank you, Christian. Can I ask you first, as an Arab, as a Palestinian, as a human being, a mother, how you're feeling ever since October 7th? Well, look, Christian, I cannot begin to describe to you the depth of the grief, the pain, and the, uh, the shock uh, that we are feeling here in Jordan. All of us are united in this grief, regardless of our origin. Uh, we are just, just can't believe the images that we're seeing every single day coming out of Gaza. We're going to bed uh, seeing those images and waking up to them. You know, I don't know how to, you know, as a mom, we've seen uh, Palestinian mothers who've had to write the names of their children on their hands because the chances of them being shelled to death, of their bodies turning into corpses, are so high. I, you know, I just want to remind the world that Palestinian mothers love their children just as much as any other mother in the world. And for them to have to go through this is just unbelievable. And equally, I think the people all around uh, the Middle East, including in Jordan, we are just shocked and disappointed by the world's reaction to this catastrophe that is unfolding. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen, you know, a glaring double standard uh, in the world. When October 7th happened, the world immediately and unequivocally uh, stood by Israel and uh, its right to defend itself and condemned uh, the attacks that happened. But when we, what we're seeing the last couple of weeks, we have, we're seeing silence in the world. Um, you know, the countries have stopped at just expressing concern or acknowledging the casualties but always with a preface of declaration of support uh, for Israel. And, you know, are we being told that it is wrong to kill a, a family, an entire family at gunpoint, but it's okay to shell them to death? I mean, there is a glaring double standard here, and it is just shocking to the Arab world. This is the first time in modern history that there is such human suffering, and the world is not even calling for a ceasefire. So the silence is deafening, and to many in our region, it makes the Western world complicit, you know, um, through their support and through the cover that they give Israel, that it is just, it's right to defend itself. Many in the Arab world are looking at the Western world as not just tolerating this, but as aiding and abetting it. And this is just uh, horrendous, and, and it's deeply, deeply disappointing to all of us. Uh, Queen Rania, I'm going to ask you more about this and, 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 and go deeper into this, uh, you know, into your feelings about this. Um, but first, I want to ask you, you know, the Israelis are shocked to their core, the grief, the, 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 the you know, the, what happened to them has never happened in that way since the Holocaust. And they are shaken to their core, as I said, and the grief. I just want to get from you what you felt on October 7th. Well, of course I was shocked. And, you know, Jordan has made its position very clear. We condemn the killing of any civilian, whether Palestinian or, or Israeli. That is Jordan's ethical and moral position. And it's also the position of Islam. Islam condemns. Uh, the killing of civilians. As my husband mentioned recently, uh, the Pact of Omar, which was issued on the gates of Jerusalem 15 centuries ago, uh, that's 1,000 years before the Geneva Conventions, orders Muslims not to hurt a, not to kill a woman, child, or, or elderly, or elderly person, and not to uh, destroy a tree or, 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 or hurt a, a priest. And so this is what we believe are the rules of engagement at time of war. But they need to apply to everybody. So, yes, there was the shock and there is the condemnation. But why isn't there equal condemnation to what is happening now? I just want to emphasize that uh, what happened uh, on October, this conflict did not begin on October 7th, although it has been being portrayed as that. You know, most networks are covering the story under the title of Israel at War. But for many Palestinians on the other side of the separation wall, on the other side of the barbed wire, war has never left. This is a 75-year-old story, a story of overwhelming death and displacement to the Palestinian people. It is a story of an, uh, an occupation under an apartheid reg regime that, that occupies land, that, that um, demolishes houses, confiscates land, 
military incursions, night raids, you know, the context of a nuclear-armed regional superpower that occupies, oppresses, and commits daily documented crimes against Palestinians is missing from the narrative. Queen Rania? You know, for too long, Palestinians' lives... I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to ask you a specific question because you're using a lot of words which clearly many in your, you know, in, in the Arab world have used, words like apartheid and the rest. But you know that you are going to come under a lot of criticism from Israel and its supporters. And I'm wondering whether you're coming out to speak... But let me just emphasize... But let me just emphasize that, that apartheid is a designation that was given not by Arabs, but by Israeli and international human rights organizations. You wrote in an Instagram story just in the last week, it isn't self-defense if you're an occupying force and you show the destruction of Gaza. And you have posted a video of yourself from a presser in 2009 during that war, uh, saying, it is heartbreaking to see how little has changed. The world cannot remain silent. This, this has to stop. Do you feel that you have a particular voice, you know, as Queen of Jordan, in a country that has a peace treaty with Israel, to speak up? It's not about me. It's about speaking up for humanity. You know, this is not about, uh, you know, being pro-Israeli or pro-Palestinian. Uh, this is about choosing the people, the everyday people on both sides. And, you know, and explaining again that the, the Palestinian people have for too long been living under oppression and a dehumanization. You know, uh, you know, they suffer daily indignities and human rights violations, whether they're being jailed or humiliated or harassed. They do not have freedom of movement. Uh, there are f over 500 checkpoints uh, scattered all over the West Bank. You have a separation wall, which is deemed illegal by the International Court of Justice that has separated the territories into 200 disconnected enclaves. And, you know, you've seen the aggressive expansion of settlements on Palestinian land. And those have interrupted the territorial contiguity of the territories and has deemed an autonomous, independent Palestinian state not viable. So you are seeing all these. This is the background of this conflict. There is a hyperfixation on Hamas now because of the, what happened the last uh, couple of weeks. But this is a problem that far precedes Hamas and will continue after Hamas. This is a fight for freedom and for justice. And that is what, what needs to be heard. Can I ask you this question then? Because, you know, a, a, a quite a brave, um, I think she's Saudi anyway, a journalist on the Saudi television network Al Arabiya, took this and hammered Khalid Mashal, the former head of, of Hamas, and said to him, the butchery, well, that's my word, but she said, what everybody's seen on their screens has, you know, turned the world away from the Palestinian cause. And just to expand, people are saying Hamas and what it did has brought this down on these poor people of Gaza. Do you accept that? Well, I believe, I do not believe in, as I said, in the, in the killing of civilians. But this is a story of violence that has been going on now for so long. And this violence needs to be condemned. But at the end of the day, what we're seeing today and what people need to understand is that, yes, you know, under the guise of, of uh, the right to defend itself, we are witnessing atrocities. You know, every country has a right to defend itself, but not through any means, not through war crimes, not through collective punishment. You know, 6,000 people, civilians killed so far, 2,400 children. How is that self-defense? We are seeing butchery at a mass scale using pre precision weapons, you know. Um, so for the past two weeks, we have seen the, 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 the indiscriminate bombardment uh, of Gaza. Um, Entire families wiped out, N residential neighborhoods flattened to the ground, the targeting of hospitals and schools and churches and, and, and mosques and medical workers, journalists, UN uh, aid workers. Mm -hmm. How is that self-defense? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, why, is, why is it that whenever uh, Israel commits these atrocities, it comes under the banner of self-defense, but when there's a, 
uh, uh, violence by Palestinians, it is immediately the, 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 uh, called terrorism. Is the word terrorist just reserved for exclusively for Muslims and Arabs? Well, let me ask there's, you then. There's a real double standard here your, that we're seeing. Your husband, King Abdullah. And there's also a whole symmetry that we see. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Your husband, King there's Abdullah. There's a symmetry <laughs> because these are not two equal people in the conflict. You know, one is an occupier and one is the occupied. One has a, a military, one of the mightiest in the world, and the other doesn't have a milita military at all. So there is a false symmetry here that is being drawn. And there's also, you know, when you say the right to defend itself, that does not say the entire story. It doesn't say the story of the violation of international law, international humanitarian law. It doesn't tell you the suffering and the, and the uh, story of an occupation. You know, Israel is in violation of no less than 30 UN security resolutions that require it and it alone to act, to withdraw from territories occupied in 1967, to stop the settlements, the separation wall, the human rights violations. This is at the crux of this issue. It is not this hyperfixation on Hamas. Can I ask you, you know, to sort of elaborate, because your husband, King Abdullah, I believe it was last weekend, at the summit uh, of Arab leaders in, in Cairo, he said, the message the Arab world is hearing is loud and clear. Palestinian lives matter less than Israeli ones. Our lives matter less than other lives. I know you've said a lot about, you know, your feelings about what's going on right now, but do you think in general that that's true, that even world leaders and others, and you meet a lot of them, and so does the king, which is why he said that, I assume. Well, well like I said, you know, it has been very disappointing to see the, the double standards in the, wor in the world today, to see that, that you know, the strong condemnation of what happened on October 7th, but very little condemnation of what is happening today. Why isn't there a call for an immediate ceasefire? We are seeing staggering human suffering happening today. You know, why is the narrative always skewed towards the, uh, to the Israeli side? You know, uh, the, the Western media and policymakers are quick to adopt the Israeli narratives. When, uh, when Israel attacks, Palestinians die. But when Israelis die, they are called, called, murdered in, in, in cold blood. It's a massacre. So even like on October 7th, we've seen uh, the situation described as savagery, barbaric, bloodthirsty, cold-blooded, you know, but we're not seeing that terminology being des describing the situation today, even though the atrocities are of greater magnitude. I'm not arguing accuracy, uh, Christian. I'm arguing equivalence and, and double standards here. When the president of the United States is, is told that, he, you know, he has evidence, he has seen evidence of children beheaded only to retract because the IDF said that there's no proof of that. That is confirmation bias. Even at your network, Christian, you know, the, the CNN website uh, at the beginning of the conflict uh, reported a headline of uh, Israeli children found butchered in an Israeli kibbutz. And when you read through the story, that it's not, hasn't been independently verified. Now, my question to you, would you publish a, such a yet unverified claim made by a Palestinian? Um, Queen so, Rania, I, know, I just need to the, stop the, you right there because there, there have been pictures shown by the Israelis and, and our journalists have been down there. I'm not talking about beheadings. I'm talking about babies' bodies riddled with, with bullets and things. But, but let's, 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 it, it is just all so horrible, as you say. Um, I want to ask you about what Jordan has said and your, your husband, the king, has said, that there is a, there has been anyway, an attempt or suggestion to move, uh, to move Palestinians who are trying to seek, you know, seek, seek safety, either into Egypt or into Jordan, your country. And, and, and the king has said, this is a red line. I think the plan by, by certain of the usual suspects to try and create de facto issues on the ground. No refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. Well, uh, look, the, the people of Gaza now are, are facing two choices. Either they leave or they face death or collective punishment. So essentially, they're giving a choice between expulsion or extermination, between ethnic cleansing and genocide. And no people should be given, uh, have to face that kind of choice. And what my husband was referring to is 
the people of Palestine should not, of Gaza, should not be forced to be moved again. They are, most of the, ref, most of the uh, residents of Gaza are already refugees. And, to, and right now, at least a million have been displaced from their homes. So we do not want another mass uh, displacement of Palestinians like what happened at the Nakba in 1948. And that's what my husband meant about this being a red line. The Palestinians have the right to remain on their land. Yeah, because they were concerned about so-called forcible transfer and never being allowed uh, to come back. Um, there have been quite a lot of protests in your own country, as in many other parts of the, of the world. And you have explained what is shaping up, and that is a very different narrative about what's happening depending on what part of the world people come from and, and certain leaders come from. There's a most definite um, taking of sides that, that's absolutely going on as, 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 you, as you illustrated. Um, what about though, or are you kind of used to it now and have to manage it, the protests on the street, even against the 1994 peace treaty, um, are you concerned about the anger and, and the wider war or the wider instability in countries like yours or in others around, around the region? Well, you would be concerned if there is division, but we are absolutely united in our stance. We all believe in the same thing. We are all feeling the same pain. We all want uh, the same thing. And so the, the, I think there's a lot of unity uh, in, in the Arab world. And as I said, there is a sense of do our lives matter less? You know, why is it that when people uh, are coming to represent, uh, you know, the Palestinian issue, at the top of an interview, they have to have their humanity uh, uh, cross-examined. They have to present their moral credentials. You know, do you condemn? And we don't see, uh, you know, Israeli officials being asked to condemn. And when they are, you know, you just people are readily accept it our right to defend ourselves. I have never seen a Western official say the sentence, Palestinians have the right to defend themselves. And so, you know, we are, we are seeing this. When um, even in Western democracies, you know, uh, freedom of speech is apparently a universal value, except when you mention Palestine. When people gather to, you know, to, in support of Israel, they're exercising their right to assembly. But when they gather uh, for Palestine, they are deemed terrorist sympathizers or anti-Semitic, you know. So, you know, you're seeing these, these double standards and, and it's creating a lot of dis disillusionment in, in the Arab world and in many who are just seeing the injustice. And I just want to emphasize, uh, Christian, that at the end of the day, there is no military solution to this issue. Wars are never won. There, there are always losses on all sides. Victory is a myth that... Uh, politicians make in order to justify immense loss of life. They can only, even, even if Israel goes and defeats every last, uh, or kills every last Hamas member, then what? Mm -hmm. Haven't they left a trail of terrible memories, horrific memories, that will just create a new generation of, uh, of resistance that is fiercer and more, uh, and, and more violent? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it, you can only have a political resolution to this. And my husband has for so long yep. always emphasized that there can be no peace and stability in the Middle East without a po political resolution. So even if you're an ally uh, to Israel, uh, you are doing it no service by giving it blind support. Well, you we know, hope expediting and expanding the provision of lethal weapons to 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 Israel is only going to expand this conflict. It's only going to prolong and deepen the suffering. There can never be a resolution except around the negotiating table, you know. And 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 and, the, and there's only one path to this, and that is a a free, sovereign, and independent Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security with the state of Israel. That is well, the only path that's going to that's gonna get us there. Many, many analysts are already talking about that, and, and, and we hope that something like that can emerge from these ashes and this catastrophe. Queen Rania, thank you so much indeed for joining us. At the time of the making of this video, according to Al Jazeera English, so far, more than 11,000 Palestinians, including more than 4,500 children, have been killed in Israel's war on Gaza.
This has got to stop. It's time for a ceasefire, and it's time for a ceasefire now.